Hello everyone, hope you are, are going well. Welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to uh, introduce you a new feature we just added for 4.1, which is the new support for instance buffers. And I will do that in a different way than uh, usual. I'm going to use uh, live coding. So we're going to live code together. And so while coding, I'm going to try to explain you what I am, um, what I am doing. OK, so let's switch to the code immediately. Here is my uh, beloved uh, playground. I'm going to just boost a little bit the font size so you guys can definitely read what I am doing here. All right. So, so far, I just have an empty scene with a camera, and that's it. I would like to create a box. And this box will be a Babylon.boxbuilder.box. Create box here. All right, I'm going to call it box because I have no imagination. And I'm going to give it a size of 1. And it will live on our C. OK. This box will have a material. This material will just be a Babylon regular standard. Oh, sorry. Babylon dot standard material. OK. I'm going to call it uh, mat because still no idea. OK, and this mat, I'm not interested by um, a lot of stuff with this material. I'm going to just give it a diffuse color with going to be uh, white. OK, so it will be babylon.color3.white. All right, OK, and my box will have this material as a material. OK, okie dokie, here. Right, okay, let's try that to see if it works. OK, it's white, expected, because we need a light. OK, I'm going to add a default light. Uh, you, you can do default lightning. Actually, you're not even forced to create a light. I, I was about to create a hemispheric light. Um, what works as well is to call the scene with create default light, and the system will just automatically uh, apply the light for you. OK, so I have my wonderful box here. The goal of this exercise is to render not one of them, but um, 10,000. Yes, one, zero, 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 zero. To do that, you have options. The first one is to create 10,000, exactly the same code. But you guess what? It's going to be dead slow, uh, because every single mesh in Babylon.js will require a draw call. So every time you have um, a box, it will ask WebGL, render that box, and then render the next one. And obviously, this communication between the CPU and the GPU is kind of expensive. And we, if you are not forced to do that, we don't want to do that. What I'm going to do here is create instances. OK? And inst instances are a very powerful feature of Babylon.js, where you can, with one draw call, render the entirety of the 10,000 objects. Let me show you how. There are some constraints, obviously. We're going to talk about the constraints after. But let's first create the instance. So here, I'm going to create an index going from 0 to um, 10,000, we said, index. 10,000, yes. And we're going to call the instance creation. So var instance it equal, is equal to box.create instance. And we're going to name it box plus index. OK? And obviously, they will all be at the same place, which is kind of annoying. Uh, so I'm going to just randomize a little bit all of that by saying that the position dot x is equal to mat. Um, we're going to be on a. Uh, a box around the main box by of I would say five by five. Okay, so I would say ten no five sorry minus mat dot random multiply by ten. Okay, so the value will be between five and minus five, and I'll do that for the three coordinate. All right, so if we are good here, and I do, did not do anything wrong, we're going to just end up with a lot of boxes. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? We have a lot of them. Looks like a Borg uh, spaceship from uh, Star Trek. Uh, my problem is that they are all looking the same. And that's one constraint of the instance. The instance must share exactly the same material as the root object. Here, the box has a material which is white. And so everyone must have a material which is white. Up until now, because with the very latest version of Babylon.js, we introduced the opportunity to create instance buffer. The instance buffer are specific attributes living on every mesh and, um, and every instance and the root mesh, 
where you can specify a value per instance. So actually, if you think about the position here, it's a instance buffer in the sense that every single instance has its own value for that. How to do that? You're going to just ask here on the box to register a new instance buffer. This new instance buffer will be named color, and it will be uh, of four floats, a color four, all right? And by default, the box here will have the root value. Um, so it's an instance buffer and dot color. Color is something that I declare, so it's um, that's why the, the entity sense cannot see it. When you look at instance buffer here, it's something which is of type any. We don't know what is it because it's going to be populated by the call to register instance buffer. All right. So we're going to say that the color here will be, for instance, a new Babylon dot color for and let's say it's going to be red okay if i do that and just that actually everyone will be red all right still receiving the light because sharing the same material but multiply by a color it's like a vertex color red okay the funny thing is that now because i created that as an instance buffer every single instance Every single instance can have its own value for that. And so here, instead of saying, hey, I want everyone to be red, let's add some randomness here and would say that it's going to be red plus random green and random blue. Just doing that, we are able to render multiple instances, 10,000. Let's check the, the uh, inspector here to see how powerful it is. If you look here at the stats, you're going to see that there is one draw call, one draw call, one message between the CPU and the GPU. The GPU will handle all of that, all of that, will render 10,001 because there is the root mesh, obviously, and will just do that once. And actually, if you look at the active indices and active faces, it's interesting, right? Because it's only 12 and 36. That's something I would like to fix in, um, quickly because I would like the active indices and active faces to take into account everyone and not just the root mesh. But imagine it's 10,000 times 36 indices that is sent to the GPU. And that's running obviously at, at 50, 60 frames per second because it's one draw call. So definitely a pretty powerful stuff. Just one thing to note here. The value is unique per instance. Okay, it, it's not unique per vertex. It's unique per instance, and you can animate it if you want to. Let me show you here. I have the same example, but this time let me hide me for a second here. I added a register for render where I go through the list of instances and I'm playing with the color, and you can see that it's not static. Every single object could move and could have its own color that's gonna change. Still at 60 frames per second. So very powerful. I encourage you guys to use it. It's something that will definitely bring power performance, and it will also re remove the, the constraint of having only the position uh, to change between instances and the main mesh. Now you can change position on uh, as well as any um, uh, attribute that you reference here as an instance buffer. Hope you're going to like it. Have a very good day. Do not forget to subscribe to the um, channel if you want to be um, uh, notified when there is a new video. Have a very good day. See ya. Bye bye, folks.